Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers. We have square root of 7 minus the square root of 6 and square root of 6 minus the square root of 5. And we're going to find out which number is greater. I'll be presenting four methods. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first one first. So for my first method, I'm going to start by comparing a radical number to an integer and then I'll just build my expression from there. All right, so first of all, we should hopefully know that square root of 35 is less than 6 because 6 is equal to square root of 36. Make sense? Okay, now let's go ahead and write this, uh, double this expression. I mean, multiply both sides by 2. So that's going to give us 2 times the square root of 5 is less than 6 times 2, which is 12. And then I'm going to add 12 to both sides, and you'll see in a little bit why that's the case. 12 plus 2 root 35 is less than 12 plus 12, which is 24. Awesome. Now, what am I going to do with this, right? Well, here's the thing. The left-hand side can be written as something squared. What is that? Notice that 35 is 7 times 5 and 12 is 7 plus 5. So the left-hand side is basically square root of 7 plus square root of 5 squared. And the right-hand side can be written as 2 times the square root of 6 squared because that's what it is. And now notice that we're comparing two squares. Can we just take square roots and get away with it? Yes, if both sides are positive, which is, then we're allowed to just remove the square roots, I mean remove the squares uh, by taking square roots. So this implies square root of 7 plus square root of 5 is less than 2 root 6. Now, remember, we're trying to compare these two numbers, and what does this result have to do with that? You'll see in a little bit, and this is actually going to show you one more time that math is actually awesome. Anyway, so here's how we're going to do it. We're going to break down the square root of 6 or 2 square root of 6 into square root of 6 plus the square root of 6. And then we're going to bring one of these over here and this over here. So this is going to turn into square root of 7 minus square root of 6 is less than square root of 6 minus square root of 5. And we were trying to find the larger number and this happens to be that. Make sense? And don't you think math is awesome? One more time. All right, second method. For our second method, we're going to compare. Notice that it's always comparing these two numbers. So we can kind of write versus this versus that. Now, I'm going to start off with this one. But I want to, normally, you know, we rationalize the denominator. We're, this time we're going to write it as this divided by 1 and rationalize the numerator. So here's what we're going to do. Multiply the top by root 7 plus root 6 and do the same thing at the bottom. Why is this a good thing to do? Because you'll see in a little bit. When you multiply these two, thi these two things from difference of two squares, you're going to get 7 minus 6, which is 1. And at the bottom, you're going to get the sum of two radicals. So this is going to be 1 over root 7 plus root 6. Similarly, similarly, we can write the root 6 minus root 5 as 1 over root 6 plus root 5. Now take a look at these numbers. Take a good look. This number is obviously larger than this number. Therefore, its reciprocal is going to be the other way around. Make sense? So the reciprocal of the larger number will be less than the reciprocal of the smaller number. Make sense? So this was equal to root 6 minus root 5. Therefore, that will be the larger number one more time. So same number wins again. Yay. Make sense? Hopefully it does. Cool. And obviously, you hopefully understood why these two numbers are compared that way because, come on, root 6 plus root 7 is definitely greater than root 6 plus root 5 because if you cancel these out, obviously root 7 is greater than root 5. Make sense? That's how, where it follows or where it comes from. All right, where are we? Third method. Like I said earlier, I'm going to be presenting four methods, so here's the third one. So for the third one, again, we're comparing root 7 minus root 6 and 
root 6 minus root 5. And obviously you can use a calculator and look at the numerical values, but that's not the point. You don't have access to a calculator. How do you compare these numbers on a test? Okay, so here's what we're going to consider. f of x equals square root of x plus 1 minus the square root of x. First of all, we're going to look at the behavior of this function. And we're going to differentiate it. Let's go ahead and do it. If you differentiate this function, you get 1 over 2 root x plus 1 minus 1 over 2 root x. If you make a common denominator, you get root x minus root x plus 1 divided by 2 times root x times root x plus 1. Now notice that the denominator is always positive and the numerator is always negative. Why? Because square root of x is always less than square root of x plus 1. Why? Because x is always less than x plus 1. Why? Because 0 is less than 1. Make sense? It does, right? So this is negative. So what does that mean? f prime is less than 0. Think about it. It means our function f is decreasing always, right? It always decreases from whatever the domain is, the smallest value to infinity. So f is decreasing, which means, which means f of 6 must be less than f of 5. Because 6 is greater than 5 in a decreasing function, the inequality is reversed when you evaluate both sides uh, with f. Make sense? Okay. So this implies that what is f of 6? f of x is defined this way, so f of 6 is going to be root 7 minus root 6 and it is less than root 6 minus root 5. Again, this becomes the larger number. Of course, it should be consistent, right? And of course, there's other facts such as f of 0 is 1 and limit as x approaches infinity of square root of x plus 1 minus the square root of x is 0, right? Is it? <laughs> well, it is 0 because if you think about it, you can write it as 1 over the square root of x plus 1 plus the square root of x. And as x approaches infinity, this is going to approach 0. Make sense? Cool. So we have a function that is 1 at 0, and it's decreasing, and it's approaching the x-axis. So the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. So before I introduce my fourth method, let me go ahead and show you the graph real quick, and I think this will give you a, a good idea why f of 6 is less than f of 5. Make sense? Okay. And here's another graph, a closer look up. And here you can definitely see that this is going to be a smaller value because it's kind of like going downhill like this. Make sense? Hopefully it does. And let's go back and do our fourth method and we'll finish with that. So the fourth method actually uses, uh, uses something called AMQM inequality. And QM is the quadratic mean. And hopefully you can uh, prove this easily, especially with two numbers. It's fairly easy. X plus Y over 2, which is the arithmetic mean, is always less than or equal to the quadratic mean. Obviously, um, arithmetic mean is greater than geometric and harmonic, but quadratic beats the arithmetic. If we use square root of 5 and square root of 7, add them up, divide by 2, this should be less than the square root of 5 plus 7 over 2, which is square root of 6. So square root of 5 plus square root of 7 is less than or equal to 2 square root of 6. And then from here again, by switching the numbers around, we arrive at the same inequality. And of course, the inequality sign, um, the equal sign doesn't matter because we know that these numbers are not equal. Make sense? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.